Let's take a look here at how we can analyze the results that we get in visual analysis. And this is continuing from where we left off. This is our beam with a cantilever that we have analyzed before. All right, so after the analysis, I end up in result view. And what you typically get right away is a deformed shape um, view. And that is, of course, really helpful already. Something else that you're going to see is that in this load dropdown, you do have at least two, um, or however many loads you used, of course, but uh, at least those will show up. So there's a dead load result, and then there's a live load result. And then depending on the load cases that you may have already uh, picked, like uh, some of the standard building code load uh, cases, these guys might show up. And we'll, I'll talk about those in a different, different video. So I'm just going to pick the live load results because we just need something to look at. All right. Next, you want to go to the Filter tab on the Project Manager, and you can then, of course, turn things on and off, like nodes or members, any of that kind of stuff. But what's important here is this part, Member Results. So what I might want to do is actually um, uh, right here, turn off the Displaced uh, display, because I don't want to see the deformation right now. I just want to see the results. And then there are uh, quite a few results available depending on which analysis you used. If you did a, um, a, a truss analysis, especially a plain truss analysis, there are very few in here. You're only going to be able to get the axial forces. Um, but uh, the more complex the analysis, the more um, you're going to see right here. So for example, what we can look at is D and Y, which means deflection in the vertical direction. And we, that's what we saw a second ago already. <clears throat> and then below this, you see that there are actually two ways to look at this. One is colors, which is what we already get here. So there's some kind of a color chart, and I get a reference right here. But I kind of like the diagram uh, more in this case because you see, you know, magnitudes. So, and then what you get here are always the, the maximum values. So right now, um, I see that I uh, slightly oversized my uh, structural system here um, and I get a very small deformation but I do get a deformation and this maximum right here in the middle and that's the value that goes along with that and then up here I get a slight upward um, deformation and I get the value that goes along with that so that's one thing that you can see and you can again you know turn on reactions if you want to get those as well that'll be useful of course then you can look at some other um, things of interest. For example, a shear force diagram. And that, of course, looks the way it should look. I can get a moment diagram. Of course, you know, I get a positive field moment. I get a negative support moment. And then, of course, it's zero at the ends because there was no moment. Um, uh, there's no fixed joint anywhere. Um, and this is also how it should look like. So this is usually a good thing to do right after an analysis. Uh, you want to double check if your moment shape looks correct. If it doesn't, then you might have um, added wrong member releases, wrong supports. Uh, your model might not be set up correctly because very often it actually analyzes um, even if it's wrong in terms of the, the, the model setup, basically. All right, next is uh, stresses. You can get axial stresses. In our case, of course, it's zero. There's nothing there. But you can also get bending stresses. And these bending stresses take into account, of course, the moment that we just had and the member. So if you go back to model view, I'm going to highlight my member here. And then, of course, the shape is right here. And all of these shape properties right here are now being taken into account. Some moment of inertia is in there and so on and so forth. And when I get this in my um, analysis, then it's right here in the, in the member results right there. And there's other stuff like maximum stresses, minimum stresses, combined stresses, and so on that are going to be of use for you. All right. So this is how you would go through analyzing your results right there. Um, you can also get a picture view 
<laughs> which is where you see uh, how oversized this guy was right there and that of course gets really interesting when you again turn on displaced because then you see the displaced displaced shape um, with real dimensions right here. Bingo. Alrighty, so this is how you analyze results using the project manager's result tools and um, all the results that come from from your analysis if you need to look at load combinations and in my case I don't have any good ones right here but if you do have different load cases or lo load buckets basically um, defined in my case there's a dead load um, bucket that has all of the uh, material weight and a live load bucket where I added a certain weight um, to the top of it then these load cases will be combinations of the two. Now this of course has to be set up properly and again this is going to be in, di in a different video but you can then go ahead and click those and they will combine the other loads as they are defined in the load cases and you can get the same member results for, for load cases at this point.